uh, it's one thing to have a place where it could happen, but you have to gather the magma. It's got to all be liquid and it's, it's got to be able to punch through. And if you don't, it's a checklist. So what happens when a sleeping giant awakes? To be fair, we don't know precisely what will happen when Yellowstone National Park grapples with a volcanic eruption of our lifetime. The beast has been silent for years, to the point that we have forgotten the devastation that happened when the supervolcano erupted last time. But now, the Yellowstone System Alert is sending a signal, and scientists are pleading with the world not to ignore it. Join us as we explore Neil deGrasse Tyson's warning against the Yellowstone System Alert that is being shut down. Rising from the slumber There's no doubt that Yellowstone National Park is a sight to behold. It is home to more geysers and hot springs than any other site on our planet. Within itself, the National Park is perhaps the most fascinating wonder of the United States of America. As the country's first national park, Yellowstone offers adventurous experiences like hiking, scenic views, the Old Faithful, and geysers shooting water hundreds of feet into the air. Believe it or not, when the very first visitors of Yellowstone National Park tried to tell the media outlets about their immersive experience, they were politely asked to stop lying for clout. No one would believe that a place like Yellowstone could exist in an otherwise uninteresting state of Idaho. In many ways, the place was known to be out of the world. Its hot springs and the most visceral experience of the country's life bring the best of the two worlds. This is why everyone loves visiting the park so much, from children to adults. But that's just an elaborative account of what you see in the park. While enjoying the scenic views and interaction with grizzly bears and wolves, we often forget that Yellowstone National Park is also cursed most devastatingly. After all, it sits on a supposedly dormant volcano that was devious enough to wipe out thousands of people. Well, that's what the scientists thought, at least. Now the beast underneath the Yellowstone National Park is rising from a deep slumber, and scientists are grappling with a fear that should jolt us. Are we nearing the end of the national park that houses many of the world's wildlife and plant life? Well, that's what Neil deGrasse Tyson believes. In order for you to understand the gravity of the situation, let's shed some light on what lies beneath the park and what sort of devastation it has caused in the past. The mother of all eruptions. Beneath the Yellowstone National Park, there's a reservoir of hot magma that is five miles deep. The reservoir is perhaps the most dangerous aspect of this foretelling. It is fed by a colossal, unprecedented plume of molten rock, welling up from hundreds of miles below. So the geysers and hot springs that you enjoy in the National Park were formed because of the very same phenomenon. There's so much heat trapped in the well that the park's geology is constantly changing. The most obvious features are the hot geysers and strings, but there are some changes in the geography of the park that don't meet the mundane eye. You see, the magma is constantly rising up to the chamber and instantly cools down. This is why the ground of the park is periodically rising and falling. Now, you can pick up any National Geographical source on the topic, and it will tell you the vast majority of the Yellowstone eruptions are small. And well, that's actually true. But that still doesn't mean that the warning signs should be glaring red. History will advise you to exercise caution. There have been three rare occasions throughout history when the Yellowstone magma chamber has erupted, and we're not talking about the smaller eruption that occurred on the Pitchstone Plateau some 70,000 years ago. We're referring to the massive eruptions in history that changed the geology of our planet forever. Despite robust scientific studies around the volcano, we don't have ample data to simulate the human and physical loss that was incurred during those three massive eruptions. But the very physical features of the park can give us some ideas. The first recorded eruption happened some 2.1 million years ago, then around 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent one happened 664,000 years ago. Now those timelines are beyond the epoch of humanity. And this is precisely why the historical record is daunting but not very threatening. We can't say the same for the current epoch though. The most recent eruption ejected so much magma that it left a 34 mile by 50 mile depression in the ground. And you might have seen that terrifying geographical feature too. It is the Yellowstone caldera that fascinates us so much today. And this is why we have historical data to label the chamber beneath the National Park the frightening alias of mother of all eruptions. 
Evidence suggests that Yellowstone is one of those rare sites on Earth that can wipe out a portion of civilization due to its potential for super eruptions. Scientists use the word super eruptions to describe an ejection that measures magnitude 8 or more on the volcano explosivity index. This means if Yellowstone defies the odds and finally erupts, the material it will eject would be at least 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles. Now, these numbers might not feel very daunting, so let's put them in perspective. The last known devastating eruption in the United States of America was that of Mount St. Helens in Skamania County in Washington in 1980. As a result of the eruption, everything in its way was rendered as a wasteland. People died, journalists suffered, wildlife lost their homes, and people had to leave their homes forever. Today, you can see a crater on the northern side of the mountain. The devastation caused by the mountain only gave a reading of five on the volcano explosivity index. In comparison, if Yellowstone were to erupt, it would give a reading of at least a five. In theory, the devastation caused by the eruption would be twice more aggressive than what we experienced in 1980. Hypothetically, the ejection of volcanic material would be so immense that the entire state of Texas would be buried five feet deep. Similarly, the monetary loss will also be colossal, as the ejection would certainly hit the most urbanized areas near the park. Not to mention, if we have learned anything from the Mount St. Helens eruption, is that people usually go missing during chaos too. They usually find themselves unable to breathe due to the ash, and, well, there's nowhere to run around. And now the park's very own system is sending us a red alert. So, let's then talk about what would happen if Yellowstone Chambers went active. And for the first time in thousands of years, we get to witness a super eruption. The unprecedented devastation. Before the super eruption, the inhabitants of the Yellowstone National Park will send us grave messages that we are susceptible to ignore. You see, the days leading to the devastating eruption would be marked by intense and rapid seismic activity that the animals would feel. So, if you witness a flock of birds migrating away from the park, or animals trying to find refuge in odd places, it is because they are feeling the jolts of the crust beneath them that humans conveniently can't feel. Even in the case of Mount St. Helen eruption, animals were showing distinct signs of something bizarre happening around their home. But as usual, their migration was ruled as nothing. The intense seismic activity at Yellowstone would take months to break up the rocks that shield the magma's chamber. But eventually, those rocks would become loose or turn into debris. And that's when we will be a step closer to a super eruption, an event that is more than a thousand times more powerful than a regular volcanic eruption. The main question to ask right now is if we have any idea about the intensity of the lava flow. Well, the process would be rampant, but in the event that lava doesn't cross a small radius within the park, we're surely in luck. That's what it would appear, though. We can't ignore the intensity of the eruption that could cross the magnitude of 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index. That's the entire point of labeling Yellowstone, the mother of all eruptions. But there's another possibility that is equally threatening, and well, it is not exactly contingent upon the radius of the lava flow at all. We're talking about the damage that would come from volcanic ash, a problem that would engulf the entire Yellowstone National Park and the areas surrounding it. New scientific research into the matter tells us that the ash, which is a combination of glass and rock, has the potential to spread across the entire American territory. The super eruption has the potential to create massive heaps of ash deposition, but the most visceral impact would be an umbrella cloud of ash that would expand to shroud the entire country. States like Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah might even virtually disappear from the face of the earth. They would be covered in massive heaps of ash that would intensify breathing problems in the country. The scientific paper suggests that the Midwest would get affected too, but less so. The East and the West coasts might be relatively safer, but at the end of the day, the global climate would suffer immensely. So it wouldn't matter how far you're from Yellowstone National Park, you'd potentially experience an average decrease in the world's temperature, albeit temporarily. Plus, we have no mechanism to stop the spread of the ash in the country. And that's a massive problem. The colossal deposits of volcanic ash would be lethal for anyone who comes into contact with it. The damage is just not limited to humans who can actually die after inhaling the ash. We also need to consider the respiratory problems that the wildlife of Yellowstone would suffer through. We can make elaborate plans to evacuate humans and give them breathing masks. But of course, we can't take similar measures for wildlife. If this isn't enough, 
a few inches of ash can also paralyze the country's economy. It has the potential to destroy farms and agricultural lands, enticing a new wave of food insecurity in the country. Potentially, the railways will be clogged, sewer lines will be blocked, and we might even lose out on electricity. Not to mention, across the skies and air passages, North America will be rendered inaccessible. It might sound dramatic, but a super eruption at Yellowstone would leave the U.S. alone in its battles. Any perceivable communication from the outside world would only be possible when the ash cloud is dismantled. That could take weeks or months. And nope, there's no way out. Warning signs from 2003. For years, NASA has researched and experimented with solutions to delay the process of super eruption. And it's safe to say that it hasn't been successful. The most commonly proposed solutions to hinder the devastation have been to drill oil aggressively in the park or increase the amount of water inside the volcano. Now, these measures would definitely extract heat from the chamber and would ease some pressure beneath the park that's always at the apex of its buildup. But of course, these solutions aren't feasible. NASA only took interest in exploring these options when a team of scientists working in the park in 2003 began to notice bizarre phenomena. Out of nowhere, new geysers were erupting in the park, the ground was cracking up, and satellite pictures from Yellowstone revealed that its surface was physically changing. These are classic signs of intense and rapid seismic activity in the ground that take years to manifest itself into something far more damaging. And if the scientists were correct in their observation, the volcano inside the Yellowstone National Park isn't dead. It is simply waking up from a deep slumber. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.